Well, hi there. My name is John Tyler, and I'm going to be conducting a course primarily for millennials, but it can be for any age, from grade six, where we all should have learned this stuff about budgeting in the first place, to people married with kids that are struggling with a budget on a weekly basis, to old guys like me who started to have a budget out of necessity in 2007, and I use this budget every day. If I go to McDonald's and get a dollar cup of coffee with the tax, a dollar six, I get a receipt. I put it in my pocket and I put it into the budget, which I'm going to show you how to create one from scratch, how to download the free one, which I use every day. And uh, when you use this, you're going to really appreciate having your own budget, believe me. So, welcome to Budget Boot Camp. During this short video course, you'll be downloading that free spreadsheet. Then I'm gonna teach you how to uh, do the budget, create it, do it, work it. Um, here's some news for you. I'll bet that you didn't know that the Bible itself, that you thought was antiquated and you know not relevant for today, which it is, has this to say about budgeting. The Bible, 2,000 years ago, people thought about budgeting. And if they didn't, they were like stupido. But in Luke chapter 14, verse 28, it says this, but don't begin until you count the cost. Don't begin anything. Don't start a house, nothing, until you count the cost. And Luke goes on to say this. He said, for who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost uh, to see if there's enough money to finish it. That's where we start out every month. We have a budget in our brain, but we don't have one on paper or online or on our computer where we can just go to it and see how much money do we have in the bank, how much money are we going to make this month, and how much money are we going to spend this month. And at the end of that uh, exercise for the month, uh, we're going to discover, do we have enough money in the uh, bank carried forward from this month's budget? Or do we have any money at all? Or are we going to be in debt? Well, that's why we have a budget. <clears throat> so, why do we need a budget? We need it to keep you from going broke. That's the primary reason. The secondary reason we need a budget is to keep you from running out of money in your account when the bills arrive. You know, the 15th is coming in, I have a car payment due, and uh, you know, it's the 15th, today's the 13th, I don't get paid till the 23rd again. How am I gonna pay this? Well, I'm gonna show you how, and I'm gonna show you how you can get out of debt, how you can get out of budget, studio's calling. In any event, uh, that's what I'm gonna show you. Now picture yourself walking through thousands of acres of woods and it's starting to get dusk and you're in the middle of this woods. You've been walking around for hours. How do you get back to your car? This is why people get lost in the woods. You need a compass to get back to where you first started from, to get back to where safety is. Well. The compass that you need to be safe financially is a working budget. A budget guides you through all the obstacles that most of you are going to face financially every week and every month. Like I said, your bill comes in the mail for a cell phone bill. It's due on a certain date. You don't get paid for five days. Now what? Your mortgage is due on the first of every month. Do you have enough money in the bank to cover the mortgage or rent? Well. With a budget that I'm going to show you how to do, you're going to discover how to pay everything on time. So now what? When you when you know your budget's due, your mortgage's due the first of the month, and you don't have it, you've got eight hundred in the bank. Your mortgage is twelve hundred, or your rent. Now what? Well, this is why you need the budget that I'm going to show you next how to create. So welcome to the class. You should have been taught this stuff, as I said before, in the sixth grade. I should have been taught this stuff in the sixth grade instead of the stuff that they're teaching now. So my next segment is going to be about how to get your free spreadsheet. I, I repeat, free 
spreadsheet online. It's free. Then the final segment that we're going to cover will be um, how to use that spreadsheet. So that is basically it. Let's go online now to get that free spreadsheet. I'll see you in just a second or two. Well, here we are in section two, which is how to download your free budget spreadsheet. Now, bring Google up to your screen like I have done here. And in the search box, type in www.openoffice.org. Uh, you're going to find this page pop up. When you arrive at that page, it says Apache Open Office. As you can see, official site. That's what you want. Don't go to download. Don't just click on what I'm telling you right here. That'll bring you to the Apache Open Office um, front page. You see that logo, the blue circle to your left? Um, with the two white seagulls in it, little Santa hat there because it's right around Christmas time. Um, that logo will appear on your desktop, and I'll get into that in just a minute or two. That'll be important after you download your spreadsheet. Now, everything you see on the top line, including this, don't click on it. Everything you see down below that line, don't click on it. Go to the light blue line right here where it says product, download, support, and so forth. Go back and click on download. You're going to get this page. Then you're going to see uh, two, well, in the middle it says English. Of course, that's what you'll probably want it in. Um, most of you in any event. Now, to the left it shows window, Windows EXE. Um, if you're running Linux or whatever, just click on your down arrow and you, it'll open up that menu. Uh, you don't see the menu. I guess I do, but it says Linux 64-bit, 32-bit, uh, Apple, whatever. Clicking on the Windows area, right below that says download the full installation. Click on that. It'll bring you to this screen. Notice the little uh, green circle there going 54321. Then at the very bottom of your screen, you will see this Apache Open Office. It's downloading. So when it downloads, I'll come right back to you and show you what you need to do to open that up and get your free spreadsheet. You'll get some other things that I use. It's all free. Be right back. Okay, once you download your, your um, open office folder, you're gonna see a yellow folder on your desk. Um, it's gonna say open office 4.16, blah, blah, blah. Open it up, you're gonna get this. And then what you want to do is go to setup, click on setup, and it's going to run you through the whole system and it's going to plant that logo I was talking to you about on your desktop. So I'll be right back and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, when you download this, you're going to have that blue circle with the two seagulls on it that I told you about early on. Click on that, double click on that open off a seagull blue circle. It's going to open up to this page right here. When you see it, you see text document, you see spreadsheet, you see presentation. I actually download all three of them. I use this as a word processing document, this as a presentation for that I do for people, and this is the one you want, spreadsheet. So just hit enter, you're going to get that screen right there, and that's your blank, empty budget. That's the one that I'm going to show you now how to actually create and use and then duplicate for three or four months so you don't have to keep making the same budget every month. It's real easy. Once you see it done, once you see the formulas, you're going to fall in love with the budget. And uh, I started mine in 2007 out of necessity. And this is now 2019 going in. Um, and I use that budget every day. If I get a receipt, if I go to McDonald's for a dollar coffee, I get a receipt, which I've told you about elsewhere. Uh, or I will in the next budget session. Okay, I'll see you in just a bit. 
Hang in there. Okay, so now we have arrived at the actual spreadsheet that we're going to use. Once you use this for the first time, you'll we'll just make up a February 2019 budget. We're going to duplicate that for March, April, May, however long you want to stretch it out. I use four different budgets, but meaning I'll use four months worth of budgets. The reason I do that is I'll have tax bill, real estate tax bill due uh, in December. So in October or September, I'll start setting the 25% uh, of what I owe in taxes aside and take it out of my checking account, move it over to my savings account so that when December tax time arrives, I've got the money in the bank, which is what I want to try to help you to do. Okay, so we're going to learn how to do the first budget. Let's name it first. So what we want to do is you see where the A and the B join together with that line? With your mouse, use your left click and drag it over to the right. I want to expand column A, B, C, and D only. That's the only four we're going to use. I'll show you why in just a moment. So bring out the B just a little, the C just a little, the D just a little. That looks about right. So once you've got that accomplished, let's go back into A. Left click with your mouse. And we're going to call that February 2019. So in capital letters, February-2019. There it is. Now, it's in big letters. I don't like big letters. I want smaller letters. So you see up above here where it says 14? Let's click on that. You don't see the drop-down menu, but I do. Um, and it says size 12. Now watch, I'm going to click 12. See how that shrank? Okay, and now I'm going to color it. So way over to your far right here, it says font color. I'm going to drop, hit drop down menu, which you don't see, but you will when you do your own budget. There's a million colors in there. So I like, uh, maybe we'll put blue. Blue's nice. I'll click on blue. You see what happened? All right, so we named our budget February 2019. Um, in this column B, let's call this, um, oh, budget in capital letters. And I'm going to do a quick fix because I don't want anything to be bold or, or whatever. So I'm just going to do something real quick here. I'm going to call everything uh, not bold. I'm going to call everything into a size 10. I'm going to call everything into an aerial. You're not seeing this, but that's okay. That's because I've used this same budget as a test for other people. So I just want everything to be right. And we'll make all the print black. Okay. Now we're ready to go into the teaching part of this again. So you just typed in budget. Let me wipe it out again. We'll do it again. Budget to get a fresh start. Why don't we learn how to spell first? Budget. Okay. In C, we're going to type in actual. Your budget is going to be for the whole month of February 2019 or March or April, whenever you decide that you want to start this. And I don't know when you're going to get this budget um, class. So in C, we're going to type in active. No, I'll be all right. Actual. The reason we want actual in there and budget is your budget, again, is for the whole month. You're going to plan the month of February. And actual, people get paid weekly or maybe you're going to get paid every two weeks or whatever it is, or maybe once a month. So your actual is when you actually get the money in your hand to put into the bank. Okay, so we've got budget actual. D column, going to be very, very important to you. We're going to type in capital letters, remarks. Enter. Why you want remarks is in your actual budget, you have car payments due the 15th. Car insurance is due the 23rd. 
Credit card is due the 8th. Cell phone is due the 19th. Whatever that is, we're going to put those dates in just to remind you that you have a bill coming due very soon. If this seems a little complicated right now, that's okay. Look, I, I had to learn how to do a budget like this with my white hair back in 2007. Had to. Um, for my own sanity. So let's go back into the budget line. Let's call it column B. Left click it with your mouse, hold it down, go all the way over to the right so that everything is highlighted in blue. Now we're going to fix everything that's in there. I want everything centered. You see right here it says left align, over here uh, right align, in the middle, center align. Click on that. See what happened? Everything got lined up right down the middle. That's what we want. I also want everything to be in size 10, which it is right now. I want it to be bold. So let's click on bold. Okay, so there we go. We've set up the very basic outline of it's a February budget. I'm going to have a budget. I'm going to have an actual expenses and income coming in and expenses going out. And I'm going to have certain due dates. Okay, drop down two lines below February of 2019 in column A. In here, we're going to type in capital letters, income. I don't like blue. I like income to be green. So you take your mouse and your left finger on your mouse and, and swipe it backwards. In other words, highlight it. I don't know how familiar you are with the computer yet, so I'm just treating it like, you know, this is, this course is pri uh, primarily for millennials who didn't get this knowledge in school, and you should have, but a kid that's in the sixth grade can learn it, and an adult that's married, got a couple of kids and struggling to figure out, how come I never have enough money, and I, I run out of money before the month is over and all that stuff. Or people like me with white hair, everybody needs to have a budget. As I pointed out on my very first illustration. Okay, so income, I wanna make that, let's highlight it again, go over to our color chart, and I like dark green. Income should be green. <clears throat> That's money. Right below that, the very first thing you want to type in is how much cash do you have not hidden in the safe in the bedroom, not hidden in the your shoe or a shoe box under the bed, actually in your bank. So I'm going to put cash on hand and just as a reminder, bank. Okay? Now, Everything from here down, I want to have in black, and it does not have to be bold. So you're going to swipe. Let's swipe from left to right this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's just go in that column and drag. Well, let's go in the column, drag everything to the right. Then go all the way down as far down your budget sheet as you can go. We're going to do something now. Uh, we're going to make everything A10. We're going to make everything aerial. And we're going to make everything bold. And we're going to make everything in black type. Okay, so we're ready to roll. Cash on hand in bank. You got that in? Hit enter. In the next line, you're going to put wages. Enter. And last but not least, let's say you have a part-time job somewhere or you have income coming from another source. Whatever it is, type that source in. I'm going to put down a part-time job. Enter. Okay, so now we have three income sources and I want to know what the total is going to be by the week or by the month. So in the next line down, you type in capital letters, total. We'll put a colon there. I like that, uh, but I want to, let's go back one. Total income, colon. Okay, 
swipe it back with your mouse. Let's go color that green, same dark green. But I want to move that over to the right. I want to go over toward budget and actual so that your eyes will always be focused on that. So up here, remember this is left align, center, right. Click on right. See what happened? Okay. Now, to keep this very simple, I want to have zeros on the budget and actual, of course. Cash on hand. Go up there and type in zero. You will see uh, a plain zero. I don't want to have a plain zero. I want to have dollar sign 0, 0 0.00. I want dollars and cents in every column. So what we do is we go up here, see the coins, the little stack of coins? Hit that, watch what happens to the zero. Boom. Okay, so now if we put a million dollars in there or a dollar twenty-nine, it's going to show up uh, as a dollar twenty-nine. Okay, now I want to cop, I want to copy that because I'm going to put zeros in a lot of places. So I'm going to highlight the block with my mouse held down, left finger, um, right-click that column. You don't see the drop-down menu, but it says cut, copy, paste. I'm going to hit copy right now. Over in the actual column, I'm going to right click it again on the mouse. It says cut, copy, paste. I'm going to hit paste to watch what happens to the C column. Boom. It's there. Okay. Now I want zeros under wages and part time too. I don't want to type that in all the time. So I'm going to go back to B, highlight it with the left click of your mouse, drag it over to the right. Right click your mouse, copy, and then go into column where it says wages, it's empty. Left click on the mouse, highlight it, bring it over and down one. Now we're going to cover, I want zeros in wages and part time job. Right click your mouse, cut, copy, paste, hit paste. You don't see it, but you will. Okay, so now I have zeros in every one of my budget and actual items. Now, watch this. Cash on hand in banks. I'm going to put a formula right in this block, but before I do that, I want to show you how it works. So go back up to cash on hand. We know you have $400 in the bank. Okay, let's type that in. 400. Period. You don't need the other zeros. Enter. Okay, so I got 400. My actual is also 400. I have two options here. I could cut, copy, paste, but in this case, it's just as quick to type in the 400 because it's only a one-time thing. So my budget, my actual for the month, I have 400 in the bank. That's all we know right now. Okay. Under the formula, watch this. You're going to love this thing, I'm telling you, especially when we get into expenses. That formula block, Highlight it with your left click of your mouse. Go up here to the Greek symbol. It looks like a backwards E. You may see a red X there. If you do, click on the red X and it'll bring up this Greek symbol. So your backwards E, which is, means formula really, click on that. See how it filled in? It says equals the sum between column B4, line 4, and B6. The colon in between the B4 and the B6 means add these, okay? It's important because you might want a minus in there sometime or a plus, and you will when I get down to the bottom line of this budget, which won't be long, trust me. But you're learning how to do this, so I'm going to be careful and patient with you. Okay, B4 through B6, that's the formula. I'm looking at B4, line B4, and 5, and 6, so that's correct. I don't have to make any adjustments. If I did, I would go behind the B6. Let me wipe it out. So now I want to put in there, I want specific columns to be added. So B4 is cool, colon. I'll put the B6 in myself to show you you could do the same thing. Then hit Enter. See what happened? It already figured out that you have 400 in the bank. If I add that your wages, let's do it now just for kicks. 
You're going to get paid 2000 a month. I just backspaced over the zero. So 2000 point. Enter. Notice the formula already added it for you. You don't have to sit there and play with a calculator. And once you do a one month budget, you duplicate everything except the actual, where you're going to have all zeros because it'll be a new month. And it's so simple. So once you develop your first budget, you're going to be so happy with yourself. And you're going to see what you owe, when you owe it, the date you owe it, and you're going to be able to figure stuff out without pulling your hair out, which is why I'm old and I still have hair. Okay, your part-time job, sure, let's fill it in. You're making not a lot of money, 80 bucks a month. So 80, enter. Now you're going to have a total of $2,480 to spend for the month of February 2019. Okay. In actual, it's the very first of the month. We didn't get paid yet. We didn't work our part-time job, so those two are zeros. But I want that formula to be in that block. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the Greek formula E, kick that in, and now it's telling me I want to add some C4 through C6. Okay, enter. It's done. I have 400 in the bank, actually, and it figured the formula out. So now that you know all that, under remarks, there's no such thing as, you know, I'm going to get paid on the 7th, the 9th. You don't have to know that. You know when you're going to get paid. So let's go right down here to the most important, well, almost the most important aspect of your budget, which is going to be called expenses. Type in expenses in capital letters. Now, expenses to me should be red. Highlight it with your mouse, left finger on your mouse. Go over to your color codes, drop down menu, which you don't see, but I do. I'm going to pick this lovely red. Okay. So it's, it's great. Expenses is in. Go to the next line down. Now, what do we have for expenses? Well, most of us, I'm getting dry. Cheers. That's Coke, not rum. The uh, expenses, you have um, rent slash mortgage. I don't know your situation, but you're going to be paying somebody something to live somewhere. Maybe even mom and dad don't know. Maybe they want some rent money. In any event, it fits all categories of expenses, rent and mortgage. Okay, drop down to the next line. I did that automatically when I typed in rent, mortgage, enter. So the next thing you have is a uh, car payment slash lease, in case you're leasing it, which a lot of people are, enter. If you have an automobile, you have automobile insurance. So the next one down would be, logically, car insurance. Enter. If you have an automobile, you're going to put gasoline in it. So the next thing is gasoline. I put gasoline elongated because you may have a heat bill, which is gas, oil, whatever. So enter. What else do we have for expenses? Well, we have uh, food. we got to eat. So food hyphen groceries. I want to put separate food groceries from food dining out. You go to Starbucks, you go out to, uh, you know, Ruby Tuesdays, whatever. That's different than groceries. Groceries is almost automatic. You're going to spend $200 a month, 50 bucks a week. I know that. At least 200 if you have a family, it's going to be 600 So whatever that amount is, we'll put over in this column, B, for the budget. But right now, back to food groceries, enter, food, type it in, hyphen, dining out. Enter. Again, you're going to, you're going to really pinpoint down every dollar you spend. I'll show you. I do it. I go to McDonald's, I get a cup of coffee, it's a dollar six with the tax. Give me a receipt, please. I put it in my pocket. If you're a woman, you're gonna put it in your purse, pocketbook, whatever, or your pocket. Get a receipt for every dime you spend because you're gonna log it into your budget, which will formulate your budget for the next month. 
uh, the amounts that you're going to be putting in column B, you're going to you say, well, gee, how do I find that out? You have a checkbook, probably, and you kind of know what you're going to spend. Uh, but if you don't, you look in your checkbook and say, geez, I didn't know. Yeah, that's right. Credit card. Blah, blah, blah. I got that, this, that, and the other thing. So another thing you're going to buy probably is going to be clothing. So we'll type that in there. You're going to have student loans. Student loan. If you have several, type it in three times if you have three of them. So enter. You may not have a student loan, so you don't need that column. But the next one's going to be, oh, geez, credit card. But I want to name your credit card so that you don't get screwed up when it, your bill comes in. So you have American Express, Amex, enter. You have MasterCard. Let's hope that's it. Um, so you have these expenses, uh, at the very least, you're going to have postage. These are things you, you don't think of. You're going to be buying things at uh, Lowe's, so, and I do, so I would type in Lowe's there. Uh, and you, and uh, whatever else you can think of for, as an expense you want to put in here. If I forget anything, not a problem. If you forget anything, not a problem, because we can go back up through the chain here like at clothing, let's just uh, say I want to add a line there. Okay, so on the very top it says insert. You click on that. There's a drop down menu that I can see, but you can't. And it says uh, insert cells, rows, columns. I go down to rows, I click it in, watch what happens. Boom, I have a row right in the middle there. See, so you can add anything you want to at any time. I would put miscellaneous expenses in there normally, but in your case and in my case, I don't put miscellaneous in there because we tend to say, well, it doesn't fit in any other category and I, I blew some extra money at the circus, whatever. So what do I type in, miscellaneous? No, you get a receipt and you have a title for that. So let's just put down, uh, instead of miscellaneous, um, I don't know. Just put down, uh, I don't want like miscellaneous. What other expenses do people have? I could look at my own checkbook and, and see exactly what it, maybe you, you do contributions to your church, something like that. Some people call it tithing. So let's put in contributions and enter. Now, Let's go down below postage. We've put enough stuff in expenses now so you get the idea. Right here, what do I want in there? I have income and I have total income, so I have expenses. What do I want in there? Total expenses. So you type that in. Colon. Again, I want that to be bright red. So we go over here to our color code, drop down menu, which you don't see, but I do. Red it is. I want to move that to the right, remember, over toward budget, like total income. So we go to the top here. Budget, italicized, underlined, left justify, middle, and right. Click on right. Watch what happens. There it is. So I'm all set, I got total income, total expenses. Now, two lines down from there. This is very important. You're gonna love this when we do the formula. You're gonna love it. I wanna know what the difference is between the income I have coming in and the expenses I know is going out the door. So the difference is gonna be, let's call that cash carried forward. Cash carried FWD. That's going to be the difference between what you spend and what your income is. And the formula for that is fabulous. But I also want to highlight it. I want to go color code it. And I want to color code it green. Why? Well, let's hope to God that you don't have a deficit at the end of the month. You just started with 400 bucks in the bank. 
So if you overspend, which most people do, that's why they're broke, a budget will help you get out of debt. Okay, cash carried forward. Before I put a formula in there, I want to add my zeros now under expenses, right? So let's go up to this line where I see there's a zero. Right click your mouse, copy. Bring it down to this line here with your left click of your mouse. Highlight that, drag it over to the right, drag it all the way down to just postage or the end of where your expenses lie. Right click, now watch this, right click, cut, copy, paste. You don't see it, I do. I'm hitting paste. Notice how all the zeros popped in there. I didn't have to sit there and type that stuff in. You won't either. So again, once you develop your, and learn how to develop your first budget, all the rest of them will come just like natural and it'll take you less than two minutes to make up the budget for March, to make up the budget for April, to make up the budget for May. Okay, so now my rent, let's put an amount in there. Oh, my rent is costing me $1,200 a month. Unless you live with mom when, and she wants 500. I don't know, whatever the amount is, put it in there. The car payment is going to be for the budget. There's nothing gonna be an actual because I didn't get paid yet. Okay, my car payment is gonna cost me I wish I didn't get that doggone Lexus on a lease, but it, I did. So it's going to cost me two fifty. Type it in. Car insurance. That's twelve hundred a year. That's for me. I'm old and trained. You might be spending three thousand dollars. Egads. So let's just say that your insurance company, like mine, they give you a break and they don't make you pay it up front, or you'd be doomed. So let's just say that uh, you, you're spending, uh, oh, 200 a month on car insurance because they're gonna give you a 10 month deal. So I got $2,000 due, let's say, for average car insurance, depends on the state you're in. And uh, let's type it in. So I'm paying $200 a month for my car insurance. My gasoline, I'm spending about $40 a week on car insurance. I gotta go to work, so forth and so on. Depends on if you have a Prius or if you have a uh, truck. So let's just say you're spending $60, excuse me, $60 a week. So that's what? 60, 120, that's 240 a month. So type in 240, because this is monthly. Okay, food and groceries. You're gonna spend $50 a week, I guarantee it, on milk, bread, hot dogs, hamburgers, rolls, cookout stuff, whatever you buy, you're gonna to go to the grocery store and spend $50 a week. That's 200 a month. Really easy to start formulating the expenses. Again, check your checkbook and say, geez, I can't believe I spent $300 in groceries last month. Dining out. I'm leaving it zero because that's going to be a flexible budget. If you're running short of money in the actual column, you don't go dining out. You don't go to Starbucks. You make the coffee at home. Okay. All right. Contributions. Again, well, some people are going to pay 10% of their wages, total income up above. So just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to put in $2,480, $248 I'm going to give to the church. $248. Let's just say. Now, uh, clothing, optional. Not that clothing is optional, but buying it is optional. Okay. Student loan. I'm going to put in that you have a student loan. It's costing you a fortune, as you know. Let's just say it's $135 a month so type it in your American Express card that you know you've run that credit up you should, really should have but you did so that's gonna cost you I, I just backspaced to clear the block didn't have to I could have typed in $45 dollars and 53 cents because I want some oddball pennies in there now so 45 53 that's due 
Now my MasterCard, that one there is costing me $65.45. Type it in. And your postage, you're gonna spend 10 bucks a month. You gotta buy stamps, you gotta mail your bills out unless you do them online, like most people do including me. Now, so what's my total expenses? I don't want to sit there and, uh, with the calculator all month, so I want to put a formula in there. So you, let me get out of there. You go back and left click the mouse right there, go up to your formula, your backwards E, and hit the button. Now that says B10 through B21. See, it already figured it out, but I might, but sometimes it says through B22. I, so I want to make sure I have everything right. I go, if it's right, I'll just hit enter. But I'm going to back it out and say, well, it, it said B22. I don't like B22. So I want B10 through B21. So I type in the one. I have the, the parenthesis on the right side in. Everything's cool. I'm going to hit enter. Watch this. Boom. My expenses are 2,593.98. I'm making 2,480, and that's with 400 in the bank. I'm up the creek. What do I do now? This is why you need a budget. Now watch this. Cash carry forward. I want a formula. Back to the Alpha Omega E here. Click that button. It says add some B22. Well, that doesn't make sense. B22 is going to tell me 2,593.98. Let me hit enter and show you. See? That's not the formula we want. So you go back over that, and I just double-clicked it to bring the formula back. Now I'm going to go to the left of the parenthesis. I'm going to go into uh, B, right behind the B. Because what I want to do now is I want to take B7, which is my total income, and I want to subtract B22, the total expenses, from it. That's my formula of how much cash I will have going into next month. So B, what did I say? B7. Here's where you don't put a, co a uh, colon in there. You put a minus in there, top of your keyboard. So B7 minus B22. I like the capital B. My formula is ready. All I got to do is click the magic button and I'm going to probably see some red there. Enter. EGADS. I'm a 113.98 minus. So now what do I do? I either have to make more money or work harder at my part-time job to pay this stuff or I have to figure out ways to reduce my expenses. So... I'm going to go back here to contributions because 90% of you aren't paying them anyway. Those who are though, and you're putting yourself in jeopardy by, by doing that, it's okay, I do the same thing myself, but I have a budget where I can pay it, and I do. So not a problem, but I wanna get you to the point where you can pay all your bills on time and have a surplus going into the following month. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and put in a zero. Now, the student loan, everything there, I'm going to have $134.02 left over at the end of this month. Notice how the formula did that. Figured it all out for me. So you don't have to do any of that stuff. Now, what can I cut back on to get more money? Because at $134.02 cash carry forward, and I started out with $400, Guess what? I'm going the wrong direction. So, let's, however, go into the actual, actual. Go up into wages. Now, it's week one of our budget. I just got my paycheck, 2,000 bucks. So, I'm gonna make 500 bucks this week, net. This is your take home money. Hit that with your backspace and type in 500. So now I have $900 right here to spend for the first week. But now in remarks column, we have to go there now because the rent is due the first. The stinking rent, it's always due on the first of the month. Car payment, that's due 
the 15th. Type it in. Drop it down by hitting enter. Uh, car insurance, that's due the 23rd of the month. I'm glad it went to the left. I'll show you how to fix this. Gasoline, you know, that's weekly, so I don't have a fixed... Nobody, Shell isn't going to send me a bill and say, hey, and you're going to put it on the credit card, which means your credit card payment's going to... Expenses are going to go up. And I got a little tip for you on credit cards coming up in just a minute. So gasoline, no. Enter. Uh, food, I don't have a... Fernandez supermarket isn't going to send me a bill. Dining out's not going to send me a bill. Contributions, not going to send me a bill. Clothing's not going to send me a bill. Student loan, they're going to send me a bill. That's due the 18th, let's say. Um... American Express, they're going to send you a bill, and boy, if you don't pay it, guess what? They're going to whack you a fee of $25 or $35 because you're late. What does that do? That makes your credit card payment go up next month. We don't want that. We want to pay these credit cards off, and this budget stuff's going to help you to do that. So that is due on the 28th of the month, let's say. MasterCard is due on the, uh, well, let's pick a date, uh, the 8th, just to make our life miserable. Okay, postage doesn't have a due date. Now, the 23rd and the 8th are off to the left. So you go back with your left click of the mouse to the first column right here under D, and you drag it down all the way to the bottom, and we go up here to Center. Click Center, watch what happens. There, they're all centered. So now my budget is all ready to roll. Now all I got to do is get paid and spend the money. Okay. My rent, that $1,200 is due on the first. I only started out with $400. What am I going to do? The bank will give me a 15-day leeway, let's say, without a penalty. So... I can't pay it now because I only have $900. But what I can do is my car payment, no, it's not due yet. Uh, my insurance is not due yet till the 23rd. Uh, the 18th, so I'm good. I got $900 in the bank. I'm going to actually take myself out to Starbucks. So over in the Starbucks dining out thing, I'm going to put 5 bucks. I mean, I deserve it. I put the rent off and I... Right? So $5. Oh, wait, I got to have a formula in here for total expenses on actual money spent. Back to my formula, click on it, it says C10, because you're in column C, 10 through C21. That's good, so I'm just going to hit enter. <coughs> it gave me a total spent so far of 5 bucks, which is right, because up in line B15, we spent the $5 at Starbucks. Now... I want a formula, the same formula as in column B. I want that same formula to go over to column C. I have two choices. One is I can hit the formula button. It says B24. I'm going to wipe that out because there's an easier way. Go back in here to B24. Right click it. Cut, copy, paste. You don't see it. I do. I'm putting copy. Go over to this column C, right-click it, cut, copy, paste, you put paste. And it automatically figures the formula for column C. Again, you could do it the hard way, but I'm trying to teach you the easy way here. Just copy your formula and put it in the column you want. Okay, so I have $900. I spent $5 my first week. I have $8.95 left. Okay, so we're on the roll here. <coughs> Cheers. Okay, so week two, thank God, because now I can maybe pay my rent. Let's see. I got paid, just back it up, backspace. I got paid again, so I now have a thousand bucks, not a hundred, John. A thousand, period. And that leaves me $1,400. Now I can pay the rent. It's going to be late, but they're not going to come after me and take my mortgage and all that. 
So in that column, we put 1,200. The bottom line down here is I have $195 left. And this is the 14th of the month. The 15th is my car payment due. Uh -huh. See what I mean? If you don't have a budget, you're going to kill yourself. And drive yourself nuts. The 18th, that's three more days. My student loans do. I got to pay it. But maybe they'll be a little flexible if I send it out. So this is what we're going to do. I have 1400 right here. I paid my rent. I'm happy about that. Every time I pay a bill so I don't have to keep looking at what is old, what is isn't old, I go up here to the color section, not the font color section, but the one to its left. It says background color. You open that up. You don't see it, but I do. I always pick yellow. Notice I highlighted that. That means I have paid that bill in full for the month. I'm happy. When I get all the blood, uh, rows filled in with yellow, I don't owe anymore. I don't have to pay anymore. It's a great feeling. Okay, car payment, it's due. I got to pay it. I can't because if I do, I'm going to be 195 I got in the bank. I can't buy groceries, and it's, I'm already into the second week. So I got to go buy groceries. I can't make that car payment right now. So my groceries, I'm going to spend only 50 bucks. And I'm already weak too, so I'm living lean. I got a jar of pickles in the refrigerator and a loaf of bread and a bottle of milk. But I paid $50. Do I color code that? No, because it's not a bill. I color code only the ones that are highlighted or have dates that they're due. Okay, so I can't pay my car payment. My car insurance is not due till next week, thank God. So the 18th is 135, it's due, student loan. I gotta pay it, but wait, I had to put gasoline in the car. That cost me 60 bucks. So now with that in, I got $85. I can't even pay my student loan yet. You see how this budget is gonna drive you nuts first, but you, by the time you get into this the third month, You'll be on track and you'll be making money ahead because your brain won't let you be a loser uh, without a budget. Okay, this is how you're planning your month and you're planning your life. Um, in my budget, just to throw this in, my budget is always, I'm putting six or seven hundred ahead every month, so I'm good. I can buy a bunch of stuff like the computer I'm using right now which I just did. Okay, so 50 bucks I spent on food, I spent on gas, I don't color them because they don't have a due date. Okay, I have $85, I'm doomed until next week. What else is due? I can't buy stamps, I can't do, uh, I can't do anything. Wait, my MasterCard was due. That was due, I gotta pay it. He got 65.45, 65.45. So now I have $19.55 in week two. Week three, thank God, it's coming up. So in week three, I got paid. So I now have $1,500 in the bank, which gives me $1,900, the $400 I started with, the $1,500 I got so far, $1,900 in the bank. But it's not really in the bank. That's how much I put in the bank. But I really have $519.55 left over, see, right here. Oh yeah, but I've paid thirteen hundred and eighty dollars and forty-five cents so far. So, but now I can pay a few bills. It's the twenty-first of the month, let's say. The car payment I have to pay it was due last week, so two fifty. I paid it. Now, what do I do? It's a bill with a date. I color code it. I go up to the background colors. I type in yellow, and that's paid. Thank God. Car insurance is due tomorrow. I have two sixty nine fifty five. What else is due? I gotta put gas in. I gotta eat. Uh, uh, uh. I paid my Mastercard. I should have color coded that, so we're back in there. I don't have to pay that. Uh, I can't buy stamps. I have two sixty nine fifty five left. What do I pay? Do I pay? I mean, I gotta put gas in my car. Car. So this month. I mean, budget-wise, I'm going to go down to the pump, 
and I'm going to use my credit card and I'm going to buy my 60 bucks worth of gas. Knowing that next month my payment's going to go up a tad. This is where people get into some serious trouble though, is that credit card thing. That's why I want to teach you to get out of debt. Okay, so I bought the gas on a credit card. So over here in this column, I'm going to put down credit second week just to remind myself what I did and that I didn't have to pay uh, excuse me I gotta cut, cut that I gotta bring it up a block right click paste to put it in the right column so what I did is I made a note that on the second week I didn't have to pay 120 bucks for gas I used sixty dollars the first week the second week I had to use a credit card okay so I didn't have to adjust that by the 60 bucks this time. My food, I'm getting pretty hungry. I have 269.55 left over. So, but what's due? Let's see, the 18th was uh, my student loan. I have to pay it, 135. I paid it, I'm gonna color code it, yellow, boom. I don't have to look at that column anymore, that row, nothing. American Express is due the 28th. I can wait till next week because next week's the last week of the month and I get paid and I can pay that off. Thank God that's when it's due. By the way, if you call your credit card company, they will, in most cases, allow you to pay on whatever date that's comfortable for you. They may charge you a little extra money to do that. <coughs> so the 8th is paid, the 18th is paid, the 23rd is not paid, car insurance. It's due. I got $134 in the bank. What am I going to do? Nothing. There's nothing I can do. I have to wait till I get paid the final shot. So week four rolls around. I got my full pay, $2,000. I forgot. I did work the part-time job, so thank God I have $80. And it's the end of the month. So now I have $714.55 left over. Now I can pay my car insurance 200 it's paid I highlight it I color code it yellow I'm done don't panic because once you get this first budget done like I say and I'm gonna show you in a second what you do to just duplicate this no problem okay uh, my third fourth week came by what I'm going to do because I have 514 left and I paid uh, a bunch of these bills, I'm going to pay 60 bucks again. That would be 120. That credit card that I already did, I have a choice here now. I can take 60 bucks, pay that off real quick so that next month I don't have that bill. And I, I'm going to end up having paid 240 for gas for the whole month. This is the fourth week. I paid 360s in cash, one on the credit card, but I'm gonna pay the credit card off, so I'm gonna actually type in 240 there. Make sure you don't have to highlight that, even though it's paid. I do because I, I it's the end of the month and I paid it. I want them all in yellow. Okay, uh, food I paid all four weeks worth. I have 184.55 left in the bank. Food's done, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Color code it. My dining out stuff, you know, I really couldn't afford to do it. I'm gonna color code that one. Yellow. Uh, contributions, yellow. I don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. Uh, clothing, couldn't afford it this month, so yellow the American Express is due I gotta pay it 45.53 and don't forget we paid that credit on the second week I'm gonna go back highlight that and put down paid credit if I learn how to spell paid credit 60 that way they're not gonna charge you 29% of your uh, $60. Now, 
While I'm saying that, this is what I wanted to remind you of about credit cards. If you spend $100 for a pair of sneakers, tennis shoes, whatever you want to call them. I'm from Massachusetts, can you tell by my southern drawl? So if you buy a $100 pair of sneakers, it's not $100. Because if you only pay your minimum amount on your credit card that's due every month, they tell me that the formula is that you're going to pay five times whatever you bought. You're going to pay it over f five times. So that $100 pair of tennis shoes that you bought on credit, if you only pay the minimum, cost you $500. Your $5 sub from Subway, it's a $25 sub. Get that in there and then you'll say, why am I a fool? Why do I owe the credit people. I'm a slave to the creditor, which debtors are. Okay, I've said that enough. So 45.53 I paid, I'm gonna color it yellow, beautiful. Postage, eh, sure. I bought the stamps, 10 bucks. Um, so I can highlight that, color it yellow. Now, as I peruse my list here, all of my expenses for the month finally got paid and I ended up with $129.02 right here. Leftover going into next month, $129.02. You can write that down somewhere. So my budget is done. Everybody got paid. Some of them got paid a little late. Okay. You go up to the top, you hit file. And you don't see the drop-down menu, but it says save, save as. I put down save as. I'll get out of there for a second. I save this budget, save as, February 2019. I right-click on my desktop, my empty desktop. You right-click it with your mouse, it says new. Click that. It says folder if you drop down on your drop-down menu. Click on the folder. Then it says new folder. Well, then if you click down a little further, it says rename. I'm sure you're familiar with some of this. So you rename the folder budgets 2019. Then when you do file save as, which you don't see, save as budget February 2019. And you put that in that folder. Now it's all of a sudden April. Uh, excuse me, March. I don't want to go through this whole process again. So what I'm going to do is go into that file folder, bring that up again. Then I'm going to hit file so I don't screw up my February budget. File, save as, which you don't see, March 2019. Click that. Now you're going to see the same spreadsheet that I see only it's the February budget. Ah, but here's where we're going to save all kinds of time. You go into this block right here and you backspace it. You type in March. Okay, so now I have a March budget. Do I have 400 in the bank? No, I have 129.02 from February. So in here, I type in 129.02. Um, that's my cash. My wages aren't going to change. My part-time job, you know, I'd like to get a little more out of them. So actually, I, I probably ought to ask the guy. I get paid 20 bucks, so give me uh, some extra hours because I, I got to pay some of these bills off. So there's 100 bucks. That's going to give me 22.2902 in March. Now, over here, all these expenses are going to be basically the same, so we don't touch these. My uh, bottom line now would be one sixteen ninety six, but it's not going to be uh, for a few reasons. Let me just check that formula: B seven minus B twenty two. Yep, formula's right. Oh, I know why I'm going to be one hundred sixteen dollars short. It just dawned on me, as it should have you. I have less money now in March than I did in February because up here I had $400. Now, because I spent my money in February, I only have $129.02. I've got all these bills here. What can I change? Can I change my rent? 
No. Can I change my car payment? No. My car insurance? No. Gasoline? I can cut that back a little bit. Let's say I spend $50 instead of $60. I just got to be careful. I'm not running around town all over the place. So $50 bucks is going to be $200 for the month. Now I'm down $76. Where else can I save? Food, groceries? You know, I got to go a little lean this month. I can't possibly survive on a deficit every month. So I got to eat. I just got to bite the bullet. So I'm going to spend $150 bucks on food. I'm not dining out. None of that stuff. My student loan, I can't get away. I have $26.96 left in the bank. My American Express is going to be $45. Bucks. I can't get out of it. MasterCard is still going to be the same. The postage, I bought stamps last month. That's going to last me. I have $16.96 going into next month. Minus. So what am I going to do? I have to either earn more money. Come on. I gotta earn more money or I have to keep using my credit card to, because my payments are too big. Or, see this thing, rent mortgage? I might, you know, I might have to realize that I can't afford a $1,200 a month rent or a mortgage. So, I either have to move and, and buy a smaller house, which by the way, I did and I have no mortgage. Um, which is going to be nice for you when you get there. So that's where I'm looking at this whole thing, my car payment. I mean, I could trade the car in and get at least, well, let's do that first before we have to move. Let's go look at that car payment. If it's a lease, sometimes your car people, dealer, will you say, you know, I don't need the Lexus. Give me a Toyota Camry or whatever. That payment's only $149 a month, and they'll buy out your old lease, let's say. Okay, so my new payment is $149. I'm in on the hook now for 36 months instead of 24, but hey, so $149, what does that do? It gives me $84 in the bank. Okay, my car insurance is going to be a little less because I don't have that big fancy Lexus. So my car insurance is only going to cost me one sixty seven forty five a month okay so now in march i've made some plans here so now i'm gonna have 284.04 at least going into next month and it's gonna build in april because i'm already in the plus column i'm happy with that so i've made some adjustments in my life to accommodate my budget my student loan is going to end at some point and when that does, that'll be a zero. That'll be 384.04 or more. Well, let's make it a zero just for kicks and giggles. That's going to give me 419 when that disappears. That's cool. But it's not cool yet because I still owe it. So, over in the right-hand column, I want that to be all zeros. Do I have any zeros? There's a zero. I'm going to right-click that zero I'm going to cut copy paste, which you don't see. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go way up to the top here in column C on my actual, because it's a new month. I'm going to drag that all the way down to the bottom of where the yellow ends, line 21. I'm going to right click that. I'm going to put cut copy paste. I'm going to hit paste. Watch. Boom. It's going to say yes, no, type yes. Now, there I am, all zeros. No yellows, no nothing. So I'm going to have 2480. Oh, no, I'm not. Actual. I actually have 12902. 12902. Now I'm going to have uh, that part time job. The guy's giving me 100 bucks. I'm working a little more because I want to get out of this debt. So now my actual income for the month is going to be the same as my budget, which is what your goal is. I haven't spent any money. I can stay where I am, but think with me that this could be a key to really getting ahead, is cut back a little on rent. Even <coughs> too much dust in my throat. If you consider renting for a little less money for a year or two, 
you can really, really, let's do it. My rent, I decided to move, so I'm only paying $800 for rent now. Look at what it does to your bottom line here. I will have 684 dollars left over by making a slight adjustment in my budget. All the rest of the stuff's going to stay the same, except i got enough money here that I can concentrate on wiping out these two credit cards, right? Maybe not totally. Maybe I owe a ton. In fact, what we can do just for kicks again is go over here to Amex. Well, let's do the 28th. I can put in column E right here. I owe $789.50 not including all the interest they're going to add up for next month. But just as a reminder, of if I'm going to pay that off, I, I have an amount in there. My MasterCard, I owe $1,256.67. Okay, just a note. And I want those to be in the middle. I want them to be bold. I want them to be in the middle. So there I did. I've adjusted my budget for March now. If I'm going to do... April, I'm going to take the same, I'm going to do file when I get done with March, and I'm not going through that whole process again, for time's sake, I'm already running late on this. File, save as March 2019, put it in your desktop budgets. This is good at the end of the year, by the way, when you have a tax guy knocking on your door saying, hey, you don't get a refund this year, kid. You owe me some money. Now you can go back into your budgets, find out how much money you spent, where did you spend it for tax deductions, like contributions and so forth. Okay, so this is how you do it. So then you bring up March again. Again, so here's March again. I'm going to type in April just to give you this final shot. I'm going to do File. Save as, which you don't say April 2019, because I don't want to wipe out my actual March budget. So now I'm looking at April 2019. I went into the bank with uh, 68404. Let's say I made my budget. So I'm going in with 68404 into April. Wonderful. Bring it over to actual, because that's true. 68404. I'm going to get paid two grand, a hundred bucks for my part-time job. I'm going to have my actual meeting, my budget here, $27.84.04. Okay. My expenses aren't done yet because I didn't get paid yet. It's April. But you've just duplicated. Um, in fact, you could do this all at once. You could do March, April, May, June all at one time and file them, save them in your budget and just bring up the April budget when you want it. Or... Like I said, I this is what I do. I just do it like this. I, I take my next... I do three months. Okay. So I'm going to have in the bank actual 278404. I haven't spent anything. Um, cash on hand is 68404. 2000 I'm going to make. 100 bucks on my part-time job. 2784 I'm going to have. And with these reduced expenses, I'm now going to have 123906 going into April. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Okay, see, so with the 123906, remember that credit card over there, 789? I'm paying that puppy off, baby. So that'll eliminate my Amex 4553. It's going to turn into a zero going into May. All right, I think you get my drift. I will um, end the class now so you can all go home and develop your budget. And uh, if you have any questions on how to do this, I'm not going to abandon you. Just send me an email, john at johntyler.com. Real easy. And I'll help you walk through it. Okay, that's it. I will see you somewhere on the uh, plains of the United States, I'm sure. <laughs>